In this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to build this waterfall graph right here, which is created by this DAX UDF that I've built over the past few days. But first, how did we get here? Well, it was inspired by Anze, whose name I think I'm pronouncing correctly, but if I'm not, let me know down in the comments, who released this DAX UDF library, which I'll put as a link at the top of this video description, along with his YouTube channel, and his LinkedIn. And he is an IBCS certified analyst. Now, ICBS stands for International Business Communication Standards, and they're essentially a think tank whose goal it is, is to make data and visuals easy to understand. Now, they have a bunch of resources and example graphs. These are under their ICBS templates, and they say, hey, get inspired. So being in finance for almost half out of the 10 years I've been working in BI, when I saw that they had a waterfall, I immediately knew that I wanted to try and build something that at least looked like it. The waterfall graph is loved by finance professionals all over the world. It makes understanding uh, how credits and debits or expenses and income flow down to produce a end number really, really easy. Unfortunately, they're really hard to build well in Microsoft Power BI. Not only that, this one is also black and white, which means that accountants are going to love it. Get it? Because it's, it's straightforward, no frills, no gradients, no nothing, just data. So I knew I'd found the ICBS visual that I wanted to recreate. Now, ICBS has very strict standards as to what makes an IBCS certified visual. For example, this fill right here that I did where it's a white box that represents a positive and then a striped pattern that represents a negative is not following ICBS standards. However, because this visual is based on their work, I am making sure to follow their terms of service and attributing this visual to them, indicating that it was adapted by me under their Creative Commons license. So we're about to jump in and review how all of this works. But first, before we do that, if you could go ahead and subscribe and like this video, it would mean a lot. All right, let's talk about how I built this. First things first, I used Google Gemini and Anti-Gravity, which is my current uh, dealer's choice of IDEs, especially for building and writing DAX. But that also comes with a disclaimer that because this DAX was primarily written by an AI, it probably is not the most efficient DAX. And because there's a ton of it, I didn't do a super close job <laughs> reviewing it other than just making sure it works. So starting off, we need to talk about the design of the data that is input into it. And the data that I'm passing here is a calculated table that has a value, a path, a depth, a leaf, a sign, a type of either subtotal income or expense, a parent, and then a name. This is a very similar setup uh, to that described in this DAX Patterns article, which I'll link down below, on parent-child hierarchies. Now, this DAX pattern is one that I have seen and personally used quite a bit to model uh, financial data coming out of an ERP. So I knew that, um, you know, if it's a finance visual, it makes sense to use a DAX pattern that works well with a PL. So I'll post this article um, just so you can go ahead and review. The other thing that this does that complicates this code just a bit is it tries to be model independent, which means uh, that essentially the UDF doesn't require my table name or my columns to work. However, that also means uh, that it is very verbose because it requires passing of all dependencies. Now I did this and I'll link what a model dependent versus independent UDF is down below. So another article linked in the video description, but I did this so I could hopefully submit this UDF to DAX lib. However, I'm not totally sure if it'll get approved. So more to come on that. 
But all that to say that when we're looking at this Tyndall script, it might seem a little over-engineered. All right, let's review what it's doing at a high level. First things first, we have some configuration variables. Now, not all of these variables, in fact, the majority of these variables are not available for you to set via the UDF. However, you can set them before you create the function of your own. So for example, you could set the value format. So right now this is a formatting string for thousands. Uh, you could set the final total label so it didn't necessarily read net income. And you can even adjust the fonts and the colors. So the first thing that we're doing here is we are setting up the visual geometry to ensure that the text is XML safe for the visual. The next thing that we're doing is we are defining patterns here. Now, these are patterns for negative stripe that you can see in the visual right here, as well as the dotted lines that you can see right here, and then connecting these bars. Jumping back into the code, we then can move on down to the next section, which is right here. Now, this is where we are essentially mapping the inputs of the parameters to uh, an actual base data table. Um, essentially, this is what's making it, or at least my attempt to make it model independent. But then moving on down, we have a bunch of calculated columns that we are adding on. Now, these calculated columns mainly have to do uh, with the subtotals um, that we're doing. So that would be kind of these values because they require like a um, running total here and then some additional logic. There's a bunch of additional calculated columns. Now, I really think that someone better at DAX than me could optimize this, but this was the kind of thing that the AI did. It worked, um, and so I just kind of rolled with it. All right, moving down, the next piece that we're doing is we are calculating out the uh, model geometry. So we're determining kind of the x, y coordinates of the SVG, right? So like, hey, where does this bar need to go, or where does this bar need to go? Um, but, you know... <laughs> And that kind of is what it is. Again, this is one of those things where it's like, hey, if someone was a little better than at DAX than me, someone could probably optimize this. Finally, then moving on, we're using a concatenate X. So this is very similar to what I've done with the HTML visual to uh, combine and calculate or uh, combine all these items into a single visual. And then finally down here, what we're doing is we are calculating out our final row, which is unique because of the spacing right down here below and because it should be a sum of all of these. So that at a really high level is our visual. Let's take a look as to how you would deploy this UDF into your own report. First things first, you'd navigate to my GitHub, which it would again be linked down below in the video description, or if it's approved for the DAX lib, you would go to their website and you would go through the readme. Again, here we have that attribution, but you would see how to call it to a URL. In this case, I'm going to just go straight to the Tim tool, and I am going to copy it all out and then go into my Power BI file. I'm gonna go create or replace. And then I'm going to paste that code in. Now, Timdall is really indent sensitive. So I'm going to highlight all of this and just indent it once. And then go ahead and hit the apply button. And just like that, what it'll go ahead and do is create or plot or replace the UDF. Then to use it, you simply need to go into your report, click new measure and then type the name. So in this case, it is waterfall SVG. And then you need to give it a bunch of inputs. And I detail out what these inputs are right here as well um, on my GitHub, which we were just on right over here in the readme. So here I am detailing them all out. And in this case, right, I set them all to my calculated table right here, image URL. I set the scale right here, which is one of the few variables that I exposed, right? So as you can see, you can really break the scale. But 
Um, so there again, I'm breaking it. And then you can set the title and the subtitle. So that's my visual. I hope you enjoyed it. Again, if you made it to this point in the video, just hit the subscribe button. And thanks for watching.